Hello everyone, welcome back to the 500 MCQ series of uh, Drug Inspector exam. So in today's video, we will be discussing the questions from the question number 11 to 15. And during the question answer discussion, you can pause the video for 5 seconds, you can register your answer, then you can resume the video to find out the correct answer and the DTD discussion. Okay, so let's come to the today's discussion. The first question is, all of the following are RNA viruses. All of the following are RNA viruses except, the question is except. Now A choice, hepatitis A virus. B choice, hepatitis D virus. C choice, hepatitis C virus. Hepatitis D virus and E choice, hepatitis E virus. So all, normally hepatitis virus are basically, they are uh, RNA viruses. They are most of uh, the hepatitis virus are RNA virus except the hepatitis uh, B virus okay so let's uh, so hepatitis A virus the genome is the case of uh, hepatitis A virus the genome is RNA ribonucleic acid whereas in the case of uh, hepatitis B it is DNA DNA is the nucleic acid whereas C it is RNA hepatitis D virus again it is RNA and hepatitis E virus, it is RNA. So all hepatitis virus are RNA viruses. They are all RNA viruses except hepatitis B virus. So you can remember this mnemonic birthday. You can remember the mnemonic birthday. Hepatitis B virus, that is DNA virus. Or you can simply remember the mnemonic BD. Hepatitis B is DNA virus whereas all other hepatitis virus are RNA viruses. So correct answer for this question is all of the following RNA virus are RNA virus except the correct answer will be B choice hepatitis B virus. Okay. Coming to the 12th question, excretion of drugs in the urine, excretion of the drugs in the urine involves the following steps except a choice glomerular filtration, B choice active tubular secretion, C choice passive tubular secretion, D choice passive tubular reabsorption and E choice none of the above. So first of all we need to know excretion of the drug in the urine is also called as renal excretion. Excretion of the drugs in the urine is called as renal excretion. Okay, and renal excretion it uh, uh, mainly have three process. One is the glomerular filtration. Glomerular filtration. Okay, GF abbreviated as GF glomerular filtration. The second process is tubular secretion. Tubular secretion. And the third process is tubular reabsorption. Tubular reabsorption. Tubular secretion you can abbreviate as uh, TS, whereas tubular reabsorption you can abbreviate as TR. Okay, so these are the three processes of renal excretion: glomerular filtration, tubular secretion, and tubular reabsorption. So then the net renal excretion, the net renal excretion, the net renal excretion is equal to, it is a sum of glomerular filtration plus uh, tubular secretion. From that you need to detect the tubular reabsorption. So the equation is net renal excretion is equal to glomerular filtration plus tubular secretion minus tubular reabsorption. So this is the equation to find out the net renal excretion. Now uh, here the question is which among the following is, is it a renal excretion process except okay. So we have told there are uh, three process that is uh, glomerular filtration, the second process was uh, tubular secretion and the third process was tubular reabsorption. So the point you need to remember about glomerular filtration is the glomerular filtration rate or GFR is 120 ml per minute, 120 ml per minute or 
you can represent it in the days that is 180 liters per day. So, these two points you can remember the glomerular filtration rate is 120 ml per minute or it is 180 liters per day. Now, the important point about uh, tubular secretion, it is an active process, it is an active transfer, it is an active process, it is an active transfer that means a transporter is involved. Since it is an active process, a transporter is needed. Okay. So, since it is an active process, it is also called as active tubular secretion. So, tubular secretion is, is an active process, it is also called as active tubular secretion. Coming to tubular reabsorption, tubular reabsorption is a passive process, it is a passive diffusion. So, it depends again on the uh, lipid solubility, it depends on the lipid solubility. So, if it is lipid soluble, it can easily diffuse. So, it is a passive process. Now, since it is a passive process, the tubular reabsorption is called as passive tubular reabsorption. Okay. So, these are the three points you need to remember. The glomerular filtration, the GFR is 120 ml per minute. Tubular secretion, it is active tubular secretion, whereas tubular reabsorption, it is passive tubular reabsorption. Now, coming back to our question which of the following uh, involve uh, is a renal excretion process except so glomerular filtration rate is a one of the process involved tubular secretion we have told it, it should be active so that is also a process involved tubular reabsorption should be passive so that is also a process whereas the C choice if you look tubular secretion they have written passive so it cannot be passive it should be active so this is the correct answer passive tubular secretion is not a process okay, in the renal excretion. So, the correct answer is C choice passive tubular secretion. Now, coming back to the 13th question, the question is HbA1c, HbA1c reflects average plasma glucose over the previous. So, first of all you need to know what is HbA1c, HbA1c. HbA1c is also called as glycosylated hemoglobin, glycosylated hemoglobin or simply glycated hemoglobin. So, this is an indication or this reflects the average plasma glucose level. It indicates, it's a, it reflects the average plasma glucose level, glucose level over the previous two to three months. So, that is an indicator that is HbA1c is an indicator which indicates the average plasma glucose over the previous two to three months, over the previous two to three months. So, two to three months means that means in weeks it is, yes it is eight to twelve weeks. Okay. So, the correct answer for this question will be D choice eight to twelve weeks. Now, coming back to the 14th question, the question is 110 LB is equal to dash kg. So, you need to know what is LB. So, LB is the abbreviation of uh, pounds, which is an unit for measure, measuring the weight. So, the unit of measurement is pound, it is abbreviated as LB. Kg, you know, it is an abbreviation of kilogram, again an unit of weight. Now, what is the difference between this uh, pound and kg? So, the first difference is between the uh, pound and kg. Pound LB is actually an empirical unit, imperial unit, whereas kilogram or kg is a metric unit. So, both are actually the units for measuring the weight, both are the unit for measuring the weight. So, this pound is a kind of a uh, system where it used in the British system, it is an imperial unit, British system, whereas kilogram or kg, it is a metric unit. Now, you need to remember the point, 1 kg, 1 kg, 1 kilogram is equal to 2.2 pounds, 2.2 lb. Okay, so, this is the point you need to remember to solve this question, 1 kg is equal to 2.2 pound. That means, you can rewrite it as 2.2 lb is equal to 1 kg. Okay. 
So what was the question here? Here the question was uh, 110 pound. What is 110 pound? Okay. So we know that 2.2 pound is 1 kg. So 110 pound, 110 pound, 110 lb is equal to 1 divided by 2.2 into 110. Correct. So this you can rewrite this 110 divided by 2.2. To remove this decimal, you can multiply the denominator with 10. Then you need to multiply the numerator also with the 10. Then the numerator will become 1100 divided by 22. Okay. Now you can cancel this uh, 11 and 22. So the denominator will be 2 and the numerator will be 100. Okay. So 100 by 2, the answer will be 50. Okay. That means 110 pound is equal to 110 pound is equal to 50 kg. Okay, so let's come back to the question. 110 pound is equal to the correct answer will be C choice 50. Okay, so you just need to remember this equation. 1 kg is equal to 2.2 pound. Now coming to the last question of the day, that is the 15th question. So the question is, which of the following drug is not an acridine derivative? A choice, tacrine. B choice mepacrine, C choice quinacrine, D choice proflavin, and E choice none of the above. So first of all, you need to know what is an acridin. Okay, so acridin is nothing but there are three rings. The first ring is benzene, the second ring is uh, pyridine ring. This is pyridine. The third ring is again benzene. So this structure is called as acridin. So this is benzene ring, this is uh, pyridine ring, second ring is pyridine, and the third ring again it is benzene. So basically, uh, the three rings present in uh, acridin, or acridin, you can tell it is a fusion of three rings: benzene, pyridine, and benzene. Okay. So this is the structure of acridin. Now you need to know. Which are the important drugs coming in the acridin derivatives? Okay, so which are the drugs coming in the acridin derivatives? So the drugs you need to remember one is tacrine. Tacrine. The second drug you need to remember mepacrine. Mepacrine. The third drug is quinacrine. Mepacrine is also called as quinacrine. Quinacrine is the other name of mepacrine. So mepacrine as well as quinacrine, they are acridin derivative. Another drug you need to remember, aminacrine. Aminacrine. The four. Another drug you need to remember is nitracrine. So if you look at this names, all these drugs contain the word acrine. Acrine, acrine, acrine. So acrine means it is an acridin derivative. Acrine means it is an acridin derivative. So you can remember the word acrine. Acrine means acridin derivative. So all these drugs contain the acridin structure. Acridin structure. Apart from this thing, you need to remember two more drugs. One is uh, a proflavin. Proflavin. Another drug you need to remember is acriflavin. So these two drugs also contain the acridin derivative, proflavin and acriflavin also contains uh, acridin derivative. They are all acridin derivative. So you better you remember all these drugs. So the drug ending with uh, acrine, the drug ending with acrine is an acridin derivative. Also the drug ending with uh, flavin, flavin, they are also acridin derivative. So all these drugs are. Uh, acridin derivative now the important point you need to remember about uh, tacrine tacrine is a cholinergic drug it is a drug it was the drug of choice now it is not used but uh, previously it was the drug of choice for alzheimer's disease so this is the important point you need to remember it was was the drug of choice for alzheimer's disease it was removed from the market or it is not used because of hepatotoxicity okay Tacrine is having hepatotoxicity, so that is why it is not at all preferred nowadays. It was the drug of choice for Alzheimer's disease. Whereas mepacrine, the other name of mepacrine is quinacrine. It is an anti-malarial drug. 
anti protozoal drug anti malarial drug so that that all there is also an accretion derivative now uh, com coming to aminacrine it is a topical antiseptic it is a topical antiseptic nitracrine it has anti cancer property anti cancer activity this is not for, not used nowadays nitracrine is having anti cancer activity whereas proflavin and acriflavin they are topical antiseptics they are topical antiseptics so for this question you need to remember the two words acrine means acridin and flavin means acridin so these drugs are belongs to acridin structure okay now coming back to our question which of the following is not an acridin derivative not an acridin derivative so you know that tacrine is an acridin derivative acrine is a mepacrine acridin derivative quinacrine acridin derivative proflavin is acridin derivative so the correct answer for this question will be e choice none of the above so hope you understood this discussion keep on watching thank you